Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back for the OPTC video, and in today's video, it's the end of the month, so that means tier list time. In today's video, we're taking all of the legends in the game, putting them on a tier list for you guys to break down who is the most valuable and the most worth your materials to level up, and who's probably not. In today's video, we're taking all aspects into consideration when ranking legends. Stuff like treasure map every month, 10-star Kazuna, super boss on the buy month, now we've got PK every month, we've got co-op options, and then you've got the rest of the game as well. Blitzes when they come around, Grand Voyages, and PvP and Grand Party. Now, PvP Grand Party, I do hold a little bit less value because I like to do my own PvP tier lists. Obviously, with Grand uh, Voyage as well, that doesn't hold that much value because you do it once and then you can basically say see you later. And eventually, as characters come out, they're going to hold more value in particular areas. But just remember, this is my personal opinion playing the game for as long as I have been. Been playing since like three and a half year anniversary, so you guys do the math there. But like I said, it is my personal opinion. If you agree, let me know in the comment section below. If you disagree, let me know down below as well. We're going to be ranking characters on power, speed, accessibility, colors, classes, how often they're used, how often they're not used, and all that fun stuff as well. But if you enjoy the video, belt like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. And with that said, let's dive into the 2024 July Sugo Fest tier list. As of last month, this is what the tier list looked like. Now, remember, this particular tier list is more catered towards the middle guy. You know, starting players, middle players, and look, end game players as well. Uh, but we are taking everywhere into consideration, as mentioned, and not really focusing on, like, the rotation that comes around. So, taking stuff like recollective archive content, all that fun stuff into consideration as well, is what's going to change in alter what you might think is like the best unit in the game compared to not the best unit in the game. As of last month, this is the top 10. Uh, as always, we will do some changes before we dive into the characters that need to be added. We have the God tier. These God tier characters are pretty much just behind this top 10 list um, in terms of value and where they're used and stuff like that. Meta, these particular characters are probably as good as they are because their classes are so good, their colors are so good, um, their special works great, you can use them in certain areas, and they kind of work with these top characters up here as well. As for ST captains, ST captains are all really much, just pretty much used as a captain option, not necessarily used as a sailor or a substitute, because that's where this S tier sub sort of comes into play. Next, we've got S tier level limit break. LLB stands for level limit break, which means that you need nine extra copies of the character to make them their full potential, and that's sort of where they fall when it comes to this particular tier list. As for PvP focus, I did want to include the own PvP tier, because like I said, this is a tier list that is catered towards everyone. Um, so these particular characters, if you level them up, you're pretty much only ever going to use them in PvP nowadays. There's not really an area where these characters shine besides the PvP game mode. And obviously, I'll do my own PvP tier list for you guys to showcase what works best on what teams and whatnot as well. A tier captains, obviously not as good as the S tier, A tier sub, vice versa. Just that you sort of just make your way down. As we get lower and lower on the tier list, the value of the character sort of diminishes and you probably won't use them here and there. Support tier, these characters all have very, very good supports. And I did want to sort of label that over characters like up here. Honestly, nowadays you're probably down here in support as well. Uh, like I said, we will do some um, we'll do some fun stuff when it comes to changing these particular characters around as well. B tier subs, like again, these guys are falling off. You do have some great Grand Voyage options though, so like that's what I mean by like say Vivi Rebecca, who's just essential for one of the Grand Voyages, finding a way very very low on this tier list. As we make our way on a B, B tier level limit break, need some love. These characters all need six pluses, level limit breaks, all that fun stuff. You name it, they need it um, because they are just desperate for something. As for the bottom characters here, these are the characters we're going to be adding to the tier list. Since last month, we've had the end of the Memories of the Straw Hat Celebration. Can I get a fuck yes? Prime example of great idea, but wrong execution, Bandai. Like, bro, that celebration was so badly handled. I don't think the celebration in itself was bad. I think it was perfectly timed, but the way they structured it, man, did it suck, bro. Uh, it's It was bad. And look, I think that's probably because of the content, not because of the characters itself. But look, we got Frankie, we got Brooke, we got the new 6 plus Boa, and then we've got the latest um, legend in Jinbei. So let's make our way up here and let's see if we can change anything. Let's go right back to the top. Apologies for the quality when I scroll. I'm still working on it, I promise. Uh, top 10. I'm going to do this. It's time. 
Uh, honestly, it is, it is time. Zoro Sanji have the best Super 10 in the game next to Roger. I think Zoro Sanji probably holds a little more value because you can run Zoro Sanji on so many teams. Don't get me wrong, I still think that this guy as a captain is the best option. But Zoro Sanji to have the value of Zoro Sanji owning your own Zoro Sanji... They're the best character in the game, man. I, I I said it on my endgame tier list from like day one. I'm now saying it in the every every everywhere tier list. Don't get me wrong, this guy's still very, very good. If you are a newer player, keep him at the six star. This guy here is gonna fall back behind the anniversary exclusives. I don't see an area where I run this guy over this guy. It just it there's not a place for him anymore like he used to with his crazy rush ability. You can still use him, don't get me wrong, but nine times out of ten, I'm gonna be using Shanks. I, I I said it, Shanks is better. I, I think Shanks is whoop. I think Shanks is way better. Um the niche capabilities that Shanks has to bypass barriers and get through ten tons of damage reduction, all that crazy stuff. But look, this guy does it with his EX, so that's why I think he's a little bit better for the the, the average Joe. As for um the order of these characters, I think Ace has definitely hold, held the, the, the best value. Uh we saw it in Super Boss how valuable Ace was with his damage nullification removal. Obviously, free spirit being free spirit are just so incredibly powerful with Zora Sanji turning them all into free spirits. And that's why I have Shanks just a little bit better than Luffy. Um, the, again, the slasher meta and the free spirit meta, they're the two best classes in the game right now. And honestly, it's not even close. This Luffy is so freaking good. As for everyone else, I think we're pretty much fine. When it comes to big damage teams, uh, Yamato is fantastic. Nami actually showed her worth in Super Boss this season. And she was very good for PKA last season. Sanji's still very, very good. As for other characters, I'm definitely going to drop Nami down. Honestly, Nami's going to come down to S-tier Captain. I think she... Her biggest issue is the fact she doesn't have fear. So that way, trying to get the special mind removal was an absolute nightmare. Same with uh, Robin. I think Robin's definitely not a meta character. We didn't even look at using her for the Super Boss. Like, she's still a very, very powerful captain. Don't get me wrong. But definitely not one that um that I would rave and rage about. As for Chopper, he's going to come down to S-tier Sub now. I'm not ever really using this Chopper as a captain. You can do it. Don't get me wrong. But you're not really ever doing it. Um, old mate... Burgess gonna come down to AT Captain. That niche ability of the attack down below a certain chain or whatnot is just fucking trash, man. I don't even care. I don't care what you say. Just rage, rage on and on about him. But like for all I care, because he's just he's not getting anything higher. As for Sabo, I'm gonna bring Sabo down to sub. Um, his auto proc's nice, but it's a bitch to get. It's it's so finicky. Like it's yeah. You use him as a sub though. He's a very very good sub. Uh, as for everyone else, I think Law. Oh, he's got paralysis removal. That's pretty cool. Um. This Blackbeard's still very good. I think this Luffy has definitely seen his time. Not that he had too much of a time. I'm definitely going to bring Toki back up into the meta, meta tier. Toki has that sort of same potential that um, Shirohoshi Mancherry has. The reason I want to bring up Toki is because in the Super Boss, by passing the Action Bind ability, it was clutch, man. It was so fucking good. It was ridiculous how powerful it is. S-Snake showed her value in Super Boss, how good she is. Bonnie's still fantastic. I think... Atlas can still hold her own with um, the um, attack down removal. As for Chopper, ugh, look, I'm going to bring Chopper down to meta because you can use something like this to get around Pain. But like, trust me, when Pain comes around and it's a nightmare, this guy is going to show how valuable he actually is. Actually, I'm going to do this because like, Chopper as a captain is irreplaceable. Like, There's no one that will do what Chopper does as a captain. Um, as for everyone else, Usopp was pretty good, but like, I don't really rate him all that much. Um, the set target ability is great, but like, like cross guild just does it way better with their triple special activation. As for this Shanks, I'm gonna bring him down to S tier captain. Special reverse is nice, but like, let's be real, that we're using, we're using um, what's his name? Um, we're utilizing Ace. I'm gonna bring Odin down into S tier level limit break because I'm I'm not gonna lie, the only time you're using Odin is either in PvP or when you're using him with his level limit break now. So. It, it kind of is what it is. These two and like these four four units here, actually these f six units really, uh, seven units really. Yeah, like look at look at all these good six plus PVP characters, man. They they just it's just it's. Oh, I love when they make uh, six pluses into good PVP units. It tickles my pickle. Um, as for this Yamato, not bad in PVP, but look really needs the level limit break to be anything nowadays. The Sai Yamato definitely still holds her own, but as for that. Not so much. Um, Roger's still fantastic. Big Mom's still fantastic. Um, these sub-characters... Like, Robin Jinbei is pretty much used every single PK. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, Kid Law... I mean, bro, I don't even know where to put Kid Law, man. 
Kid Law is literally just a sub nowadays. Like, they're good for big damage teams, but they don't provide anything else, man. It's it's upsetting. Same with um this guy. This guy sucks, man. I use him in treasure map, and if you get him, you'll use him in PvP, and you'll use him in treasure map a lot. But, like, like I don't... I, I'm gonna put him in PvP, because that's, like, the only place I would recommend leveling him up for. Again, you can use him in treasure map, don't get me wrong, but he's not, like, an essential character to level up for treasure map. Um, as for everyone else, I'm pretty happy with everyone else, actually. Robin, Koala, fantastic. Yep, Momo could probably be dropped, but we did use him in Super Boss, actually, and he was very, very good. This Robin, um, I'm gonna bring her down to S tier sub as well. I just think that the double conditional metal meta has started to die, and yes, a lot of people are gonna sit there and say, but Stomp, you put Big Mom all the way up here. Big Mom is needed for Driven teams. She's needed for Powerhouse teams. Um, they don't really have all that many, like, other buffs that can kind of carry them across, like Free Spirit and Cerebral have. Uh, well, Free Spirit, I should say. So, Robin definitely doesn't bring as much to the table that what Big Mom brings. Remember, Big Mom is an EX unit. She's a double super class on top of being Color Affinity and a six times captain. Robin Robin just can't do that. She's she's just not that. Um, if you guys can tell me the last time you used Robin in, in the comment section below, I might, might, might change my mind. Um... Roger and Whitebeard definitely falling off. They're another character that can probably fall down to S tier sub. It hurts because I love Roger Whitebeard. Roger Whitebeard are still so fantastic. But like 9 times out of 10, you're going to use them as a sub. And if you are using them as a captain, it's pretty much only for Grand Voyage. Like, It's, it's not that they're a bad captain. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're a bad captain. I just think that if you are running a slasher team or a striker team, you're going to use something like... Um, like this for a striker captain. If you're looking for slasher teams, you could probably run Momo. Like, you'd run fucking Roger before you ran um, this guy's captain because of the weird and wonkiness. As for everyone else, uh, I'm pretty happy with everyone else. I don't really think there needs to be too much change. Um, for newer players, like AC Yamato still is very, very good. Zora is still amazing. And as for the top 10, I I'm pretty happy still keeping this as a top 10. And look, that might be a bit of a spoiler as we scroll our way down here to sort of have a look at these particular characters. We have Frankie, Brooke, Boa, and Jimmy. Now, Frankie, as a captain, does hold the most interest to me. In PvP, this guy is an absolute demon. The deck shooter team came out of the woodworks, came out of nowhere, no one saw it coming, and they absolutely blew everyone away. But what Frankie doesn't have at his disposal is some craziness in his special, in his captain ability, and all that fun stuff too. So Frankie's very, very good, because when you tap with him, he can remove defense up, I believe, as long as you get Barrier Pan. But now Barrier Pan's just getting nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. You have to be above 50% HP or below 10% HP and all that shit. So Frankie, not that great as a captain too much, but can definitely work. He's a powerhouse captain as well, being a super class powerhouse unit, which is wonky because you do want Barry Pen, and that's where all the shooter characters are. But look, you do have some value with uh, Frankie. Nine times out of 10 though, I'm going to be using Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo. And I don't know why Ben Beckman and Lucky Roo aren't in ST captain, because they have that ability to remove all damage reduction effects. Like the defense up, damage reduction, and threshold. They can remove it with their, um, what's it called? With their captain ability. Frankie, though, what he can do is remove a whole bunch of damage reduction, a whole bunch of thresholds. Um, I believe he does color affinity, which he can carry over, which is still very, very valuable. And that's pretty much where he has his most, his, his, um, his value. Now, the upside of Frankie is he's a deck shooter. And that makes this guy just infinitely more valuable. Same with Usopp, same with Frankie. So you can do some fun stuff there. So I'm going to put him meta because I do think he's probably on par with this Usopp in terms of what Usopp's providing. But I don't think he's like as valuable because he doesn't have free spirit as a tag. So he's a good unit. He's a very, very good unit, but not one that is like super, super amazing. As for Brook though, Brook's going to go right up here next to Chopper. Brook's another character. Oh, he disappeared. Where did he go? Brook, Brook Summer. Uh, okay, that's not fun. I have to now find Brook. Um, but Brook, there he is. Uh, Brook is a character that has something that no one else can do. And that's a big reason why I brought Toki up. Because the action bind mechanic has been wreaking havoc. It is an absolute toxic mechanic that is artificial scaling to just stop us from using our units. And besides Brook, the only other character that can get around this is Toki. But you have to apply the Toki Toki ability beforehand. Brook has an auto proc in his captain ability when you're below 30% HP. Which you can easily get with rush abilities and stuff if it's on like something like a second turn. But being able to get around this is very, very valuable. This action by mechanic 
just causes so much damage. But the problem with Brook is you have to know where it is. And as a captain, you nine times out of ten, you won't be able to get around it. But just like Chopper, he makes life very easy when it does come around. Plus, he's an orb booster. He can extend orb boosts. He can do chain boosting shenanigans. He can buff the chain boost by 0.7. He's actually very, very good. And obviously, being free spirit and slasher... Like, makes him a very valuable character. Plus, in PvP, he's an absolute demon. As for the latest 6+, plus, we've got Boa. And look, Boa sucks, man. Boa's really, really bad. Um, in regular content, she's gotten a lot better. Because she now does, like, a 4-turn chain boost. She gives you a clock buff. She can do weakening, uh, which is awesome if you have increased damage taken. But, like, it's just too much complex shit that Boa didn't need. Her super type did get buffed. 3 turns of a... Um, Attack boost to Psy and a full ward of her orbs being Psy. It's whatever, man. Honestly, like, I'm just not a fan. Like, sh after seeing what they were doing with these characters here in PvP, like, like look at these characters in PvP. Like, Odin, Demon on Slasher teams. Lore, Demon on Psy teams. Luchi, Demon on the um, decks and the deck shooters. Kaido on Quick. The Cerebral Int team. Even running stuff like Rayleigh on Slashes. Shanks crew on Slashes. Tesoro on the Driven team. This shanks on, again, Cerebral when you're taking on Psy. Hell, you can run Luffy and Ace, plus Nami Robin in, in um, Grand Party. This Pudding, for example, is fantastic. So, I don't know where the fuck they went wrong when they were making this Boa, and what they were thinking when they gave her not only her PvP abilities, but her regular abilities. So, I don't know, man. She's just, in my eyes, she's not good. Like, she's just not a good level break and not a good 6+. plus. Um... But, like, she will have value somewhere, like this guy does, you know? Like, this guy is still, like, good, but, like, you're just never really going to run him too much. As for the final unit, we've got Jinbei, the Jimbelias. Um, Jinbei's actually pretty good. As a captain, he's kind of a demon in the terms that he removes Special Mind. Any captain that can remove Special Mind, in my eyes, is freaking amazing. Um, special Mind is one of the most annoying abilities to get around. Especially when you have, like, fear thrown into the mix and whatnot. So having Jinbei remove that is amazing. He gives 90% damage reduction. He's a free spirit character, which is fantastic. So that means you can give 90% damage reduction to a character like this. That can go absolutely bananas with the final tap. Um, or you can use this particular character as well with their final tap and just go crazy there. You could use something like this Yamato on, uh, Yamato on the same team to actually get the damage reduction buff. And then that 90% goes to the absolute wazoo. Plus, he can have he has a very interesting ability where he can um, increase buffs. Um, and then you lose HP. This is great for getting around stuff like stun. And it's fantastic for like these new damage threshold abilities that like Pika Ace is throwing at us as well. So... Jimmy, he's okay. Like, I, I don't think he's as good as something like Brook and Chopper. But I do think he's probably a little bit better than some of these other, like, characters here. Um, and look, just looking at where I ranked them last time, I do want to actually keep him in S tier captain. Because he's probably going to hold most of his value as a captain. If he's got um, stun removal as a sailor, which I haven't checked, he might hold some value as a sailor. Um, but for what he does, he just gives fear, which is not, like, exceptional. Oh, he gives the, sorry, weakening effect, which is not exceptional. Like, it, it just sort of is what it is, unless you have increased damage taken. Um, and then he can do, like, chain multiplicative stuff, but most of the time, you're gonna have this unit here doing that for you. So, there you guys go. That's the tier list for the end of July 2024. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, but like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, if you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all in the next one.